the winner of this year's Significant New Researcher Award, Wojtek Matusik of Adobe Systems. Wojtek. Thank you, Spike. So there is really no guidelines for these talks, so I have decided to analyze the past and the present in computer graphics, uh, and I will try to look at the trends, and this might help us to extrapolate and speculate on new challenges. There's a small disclaimer written with a very small font. I'm not sure if you can see it, so I'm going to zoom in on that. So in this talk, I really con it really contains my own very biased and oversimplified view of the computer graphics, and I wouldn't want anybody to get offended. So traditionally, computer graphics has been always about the simulation, a simulation to generate images and videos. And the core simulation interacts with a number of different components. So for example, once we set the geometry, the lights, shading, and motion, we can start the simulator, and after some time, we get a, an image or a sequence of images back. So in traditional computer graphics, geometry, lights, shading, and motion, they have been defined, they, they have been uh, modeled by hand, they have, they have been also procedurally defined, or they could be expressed as simple analytical formulas. So for example, geometry is typically modeled by hand, or is pre defined procedurally. So for example, geometry defined by L systems, fractals, and different types of noise functions have been extremely popular. Lights, lights have been modeled typically analytically. So we have these simple formulas for directional lights, point lights, spotlights, and more complex light sources can be composed from a number of simpler ones. Similar reflectance from surfaces. It's, this reflectance has been also modeled analytically. So we have a plethora of different reflectance models. For example, Fong, Bling Fong, Cook Torrance, and more complex shading functions can be, comp can be uh, they can be expressed as a combination of simple ones. For example, using Rob Cook's shade tree data structure. And an animation we have typically used animators. We have used manual speci specified keyframes. And for articulated R characters, uh, manu we used manu manually uh, designed joint controllers. And these were used to reduce the work of the animator. And then we, when we used all these components together, along with some sophisticated simulation models, we were able to achieve very sophisticated and com com compelling images and videos. And moreover, the users were able to tweak all these different components, lights, shading, geometry, and motion, in order to des produce desired images. However, we were still able to ob observe substantial difference between these images and the photographs, for example, captured using digital cameras. And then, since early 90s or mid 90s, we have had completely new trend, data-driven computer graphics. And we had a few reasons for that. There has been an, a, an amazing progress in the development of different sensors, which we were able to use to measure the real world. And second, we really had access to cheap storage and to cheap computation power, which we were able to use to analyze the data and process it. So for example, for in geometry, we, had, we used 3D scanners to acquire huge geometric models with hundreds of millions of poly polygons at extremely high precision. And although environment mapping has been around since early 80s, the progress in digital cameras and in di high dynamic range techniques had made it really commonplace. So I think many of us have used Paul de Bevec's high dynamic range light probes as illumination light sources. And the progress in digital imaging, digital cameras, has also contributed to development of different systems uh, that we were able to use to measure properties of real world materials. So we have used Gonio spectral reflectometers to measure BRDFs, spatial varying BRDFs, BTFs, and even materials with subsurface scattering. And of course, these materials, we were able to apply it 
to arbitrary geometry and under, under arbitrary light sources. And in animation, motion capture techniques have been really fundamental. They have reinvented the field. In special motion capture studios, we can pretty much acquire motion of almost any subject. So to summarize, in data-driven computer graphics, we have replaced these hand-modeled, analytically defined or procedurally defined components such as lights, geometry, shading, motion, and we have replaced it with real-world measurements. And suddenly we were able to generate images that were much, much better, that were much closer to the real photographs. And of course, there has been also progress in simulation techniques. However, I claim that the main reason behind the progress in realism has been the use of data-driven techniques. But there was obviously one problem with this initial approach. Suddenly we have also le lost the ability to edit these components. So we, so we were not able to edit lights, geometry, shading, and motion. So we just typically had just a collection of instances or, or exemplars of real measurements, but we were not able to tweak these exemplars. So the next step was to add back these capabilities. So we, we wanted to develop data-driven models and editing tools. So the availability of, of captured geometry has really fueled the progress in geometry processing. For one of, these, of, the, of the prime examples here is the work by Tom Funkhauser and colleagues. And they provide tools to construct, to synthesize new geometric models from a large database of real exemplars. And unfortunately, we still do not have proper tools to synthesize novel lighting by, based on a database of real world lighting exemplars. And this might be really an opportunity for future work. And perhaps the closest work in this area is the work by SkyFinder that is being presented this year at SIGRA. So this work, SkyFinder provides search but no synthesis of available cap capabilities over a large collection of sky images. In a Appearance modeling, we have a number of different techniques. We have tools to synthesize novel BRDFs, PTFs, spatial varying BRDFs, and even starting this year, we have tools to synthesize materials and edit materials with subsurface scattering. And in animation, the prime example is the work by Lucas Kovar and colleagues. And there was also a concurrent work by uh, Lee, Lee et al. and Arikan and Forsyth. Motion graphs provide a method to synthesize new desired motion based on a database of real uh, world examples of motion capture data. And this work has ex ex attracted really a lot of attention in computer animation. So as you have seen in the previous slides, computer graphics has become data driven. There has been an amazing progress in development of different sensors we can, which we can use to measure the real world, and then we can build editable models from these measurements, and finally we can use those to synthesize novel images and videos. 